dear friends of the non European art and culture, this is Ingo from About Africa, the rest of the world, and yes, now it's end of December 2023, and now it's time for me for my review of the tribal art market of the year 2023. What has happened on the market for the traditional African and oceanic art? And let me start with a point which I would say is more like the conclusion. Conclusion is there was little total turnover. It was not such a successful year with a lot of money made, but a lot of interest, a lot of bidding, a lot of selling, a lot of buying. And let me start with, this is my calculation, my estimation of the year, what was sold in tribal art auctions. And it was about 30 million euro, euro, dollar, you know, everything's more or less the same, 30 million euro. And if I compare this to last year to 2022, I had an estimation of 42 million. Artcade later had 60 million. Now the difference between 42 and 60 million is a lot of, but Artcade maybe has more pre-Columbian art in it or, or other things, I don't know. But I had about 42 to 60 million. Now I have 30 millions. That means this year we had compared to 2022 we had about a third or half less turnover than in the last year. And uh, which is, yeah, that's a lot of. And the point is, I think there was one auction which was very typical for the whole year, and that was the Sotheby's auction of the Hélène uh, uh, Leloup uh, collection. You know, uh, Hélène Leloup, she was one of the most famous and important dealer and, and field collectors for the traditional African art. She died some weeks ago and I think there will be two uh, auctions. One was last year, was 2022, was, this, was this, this year in Paris. Next thing will be in uh, maybe in America in 2024. And if you ask the people of uh, Saldes, whether it was a success, they would say, yeah, it was a success. Because 80% of the tribal art objects were sold. There were really some bidding batteries, some, some objects should cost 10,000, they were sold for 50,000 and things like that. There was a lot of work. And there was one Francis Bacon, which was sold for a lot of money. But on the other hand, if you look at it, only two of the top eight objects were sold. And the only one with an estimate higher than 1 million euros failed, which is absolutely strange that, that, that this failed. It was this uh, uh, Bieri object of the Fang. The estimation was between 4 and 6 million euros, and there was no one saying, I want to have it, which is strange. Now, we were talking about Sotheby's, and this was the main object in one of the main auctions and they did not get a seller or a buyer in advance and so failing for such an auction house is strange but once again they will tell you that it was a success because 80 percent was sold because there was a lot of bidding but on the other hand the main points were not made and one main point was this frank i personally i don't like the the photo of it i haven't seen it in in real life because i i heard that it looks good looks great on this photo it looks a little strange but okay this is a completely different thing so the point is you had a little bidding but there were not so many blockbuster auctions there were not so many big fishes which were sold and this was the main point or the loop auction but that's that's it more or less and for example 2022 we had seven objects who bought brought over 1 million euro seven now we only had three of them and this is a big difference so the big money wasn't there to buy the big objects at the point and this was the staff of this year this was from christie's it's an awesome bali mask sold for two million euro i think most things i tell you are including are included the the premium it's for two million euro and it's the symmetry and the, the eyes and look of the, the carving there it's it's so nice thing from the ballet it's 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 awesome this was sold for two million but this was the star i think last year we had some objects for four five million euro so this was the star of this year and uh, let's 
have a look at the three big auction houses. With big auction houses, I don't mean that these are the biggest in the tribal art world. Sorry for saying tribal art all the time. I know some people don't like this, this expression because <laughs> the art of Africa was not always rural. It's sometimes a royal art, of course, so it's not always tribal art. And the wording tribal isn't... Today you're talking about people. I think it's better, but tribal has learned, so I will, <laughs> I will use it. So, but let's have a look at the three big three auction houses from there, mostly I think from England, and they are the belong to the biggest auction houses in the world, not because the tribal art thing. And you know, eleven million euros was the turnover of Christie's. They have been the number one once again for the market last last same last last year. Then seven and a half million euro was the turnover of Salvis, that's number two. And number three was Bonhams with 1.2 million. Just one point, Lamberts, Lamberts made about 2 million euro with tribal art auctions, so more than Bonhams. But let's see, these are the big three fishes Christie's, Sotheby's, and Bonhams. And you see that uh, Christie's and Sotheby's are more or less on the same level. One point, for, one reason for that is normally uh, Christie's is doing an auction in December, but they did not do so. So Let's see what will happen. I heard, that's the point, I heard that next year, that means 2024, Christie's will do an auction with, with parts of the collection of Barbier Müller. And you know Barbier Müller, this is a private museum, one of my favorite museums. I think there were two great private museums. One was the Musée d'Apé in Paris, the other is Barbier Müller in, in Genf, in Genève. And to hear that some parts of this collection will be sold it has for me has a crying and laughing eye, crying eye, because I really love this Babi Miller collection. And now it's gone, so and by but a laughing eye because I think it's not the worst thing for the market if there is such a powerful auction twenty twenty four. So let's see what, what Christie's will do. Let me sell the best of Bonhams. Here, once again, these are this some of the craze Christie's big fishes which is sold this year. Beside the Bali, it's a Talon sculpture with an estimation of 100,000 euro. It was sold for 1.25 million euro. Classic Talon with a patina, you know, these very old, 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 old objects from Mali. Then we have a Hamba from the Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, for about 1 million euro. You see the three objects which Brought more, brought more than 1 million euro, they all have been at Christie's. Then we have a great Congo objects, nearly a realistic thing, and we have the lobby. And lobby is interesting because you know the market for lobby is destroyed. You can get good lobbies for 1000 euro, for 800 euros, for whatever, but at the high end level, there are still people who buy lobby for half a million euro. Which is great as well. These are the big, the best thing of, of Christie's, which have been the main thing of Sotheby's. The main point has been this Sarpi Portuguese ivory for nearly 900,000 euro, which is once again is a lot of money. But I think you, when you, for, you will never have a discussion about looted art or things like that with this because you know it was made, I think, in the 16th century. It's decorative art, it's not tribally used. It's not used by people in Africa. It's just made for the European market, but it's awesome and they're very, very rare. And so I think, yeah, I did understand why it brought nearly 900,000 euros. Other Sotheby's objects have been this Dogon, once again, this Quilly mask and Hawaii. And the main points I saw at from Bonham's were this <laughs> Stone, I think it's more or less man stone money, big stone money, plus 73,000 euro, which is, I heard, a world record for this kind of, of currency. And once again, Hawaii for 76,000, some of the one hand stars. So we have a big three. We have more or less in one level, Christie's and Selvis, with Christie's still number one, and then we have and then we have Bonhams. That's the point with the big three. One reason why this year was not so big like last year was there was not so many surprise surprise with surprise surprise i mean 
that there is an auction in a small auction house in Moscow. And suddenly there's one thing goes, whoosh, because all insiders know that this is there, but others don't know. And the point is you can't, you can't hide <laughs> good objects in small auctions because it's so transparency. There's such a transparency today because of the uh, yeah, internet. And the surprise of 2022 was this this uh, fang mask you know <laughs> this is a nice story the point is i think it was bought by a dealer for some hundred euros and then sold for more than four million dollar in in france and then the the one who had it it was an old cover said hey we got some hundred euros and you are on such some million we want money too and there were some legal things about it and I think they did not get right, they did not get any money. And the new story about this, point, this, this mask is that the government of Gabon says we want to have a back because this is, shows that our Harris, they fought against the colonial troops, the resistance against the colonial rulers and this mask is a symbol for that. So, on the other hand, you have to say that, that uh, there's new government in Gabun, and it was always Gabun was always very Western or, West, or very French minded. There's a new government which is not French minded. We're not French, not orientated. They more look to China, more look to Russia and others. So there's, yeah, I think, I think there will, there's, I don't think that they will get the mask back. Of course not, but something is happening in the world. That's the point. And this was a sensation in 2022, but now there was, as far as I see, there was not such a sensation this year. Once again, if you know something better, write emails, write comments, do everything. I want to learn, I can't see the whole year. There was one small sensation and this was a small surprise and this was an auction in, in, in Lisbon. I can't speak Portuguese, so it's auction house Caporal Monzada Le, Le, Le is, I don't know. Roberto Domingos from, from Great or Fake will know better. And there was a very nice chocolate uh, collection. And among them was this mask, which was sold for 110,000 euro. So there are some surprises, but not the biggest one in the world. This was the, the big three. What the, about the other ones? We always had four very, very strong houses on the continent with departments for African and Oceanic art. Four, and now we have to say, and then we're three. Of those four, the number one in the last year, or this year, was Lambert's. They did two awesome auctions. The first in January was the Lazar auction. They were objects with the collection of Lazar, of the couple, the Lazar couple was sold. And, you know, I wrote an article about this in the for Kunst und Auktionen. And in this, I wrote that <laughs> you could really bid on, you should really bid on each item because each item was worth a bidding on it because the price was good and the quality was good. The price quality relationship was fantastic. And at the end, I think 94% of these objects were sold. It was such a big success. And the main <laughs> I think, think was the Southeast Africa figure for 55,000 euro. I think nobody really knows where is it from. Some told me it's maybe it's Abelam or some told me it's, it's from, uh, from India or whatever. I heard so many Apple's <laughs> stories about it, but it was a strange thing. You know, the second Lambert's auction <laughs> was this, this, this fang, I think the, Estimation was about 5,000, 10,000 euro. It was sold for 39,000. So Lambert's is number one on the continent at the moment with nearly 2 million euros. And the point and the secret of, is it a secret? Success secret of, of Lambert's is they have fantastic estimations. Emily Jolie and, and Tim Toyton, the experts are really doing a great job. The point is, you know, they're, they're never so cheap that you say, oh, that's rubbish, it can't be anything, you are too cheap. And then, but they're never so high that you don't have loss, that you don't say, oh no, I want to bid. They have always take sections where you say, oh, yeah, for this quality, I think I could bid. 
Later, if one thing is, is, is the taxation is 2,000 euro, and if it's then sold for 10,000, everybody can say, oh, yeah, it's higher than the estimation, but you know, there are some insiders like me, and we especially know what is, you know, never. So they do great job with estimation with good quality and are the number one of the continent, if you look at them. The number two is native. Native is, I think they made 1.2 million euro in the EU, which is amazing. They are in Brussels. Always interesting items, always good taxations, always nice photos. I really love their work. And they had a thing which is a sensation for one of the smaller auction houses. They could sell one object for 390,000 euro. It is this Crabo mask. It's an amazing object, the Cray provenance. And you know, it's not, <laughs> even Lambert does not often sell objects for 100,000 euro. Mostly they do not. So great thing for native, 390,000. Creative, congratulations. What about the other two big houses? One is Zemanek. I've got here some things without Bremen. They had two real auctions and two, I think, online auctions. The first was the Jubilee auction with, I think it was the travel art auction number 100. 100 at Zemanek Münster. You know, they're sitting in Würzburg in Germany. And for example, they sold this uh, Kiveber for 22,000 euro. The auction was okay. It was maybe not the biggest success ever, but it was okay, it was good. And the second auction was November, where they had, the, for example, this Lager, they sold it for 34,000 euro, which is a good price. You know, this is an old item. It was published and exhibited in the 1930s. And besides this, for example, they had one, two or three great Managan masks, which they sold. So this was a nice auction, though I think Semane can be very happy with this year, 2023, and here, and we in Germany. We, and yes, we in Germany, we, we need Zemanek. That's the point, we need him. But I told you there are four auction houses. <laughs> there were four auction houses. Yes, farewell. Davanteo, with the expert Jules Fisser, made great auctions some years ago. They were good. For, they had no one in, in was March, I think, I don't know, at the beginning, and this year, where they sold this Papua New Guinea object for 65 euro, 65,000 euro, which is, once again, a lot of money. And Dorothea has done a great job, but Jos Fischer, he has left the company, and I talked to the press agents of, of Dorothea, and she wrote me that uh, after, with Jos Fischer, they buried the department. So there are no traditional African, there is no traditional African oceanic art at the door here anymore. So, and then there were three Lampets, Native and Semenek. What about, what about the others? Yeah, there are other houses. Maybe they don't have the specialization, the special departments for, for, the, for this art, but they always have interesting auctions. For example, there's Ada or Ada who bought uh, or sold this Vanuatu stone objects for 140,000. Yes, are they always interesting what they have? Sometimes they have things where they say, wow, that is interesting. Piggy saw this coater for 130,000. You know, everybody should have a coater at home uh, here. And <laughs> Gikello had a coater once again for 103,000. Now, Gikello is, is, is a strange auction house. Sometimes they have great auctions with travel art, sometimes not, and sometimes in the same auction you have good objects and, and, and strange objects. So it's oh, it's not easy. Geek Halo auctions are never easy. And always, always have a look at other auction houses as well. For example, Hammer Auktionen, sitting in Basel, with an export for this auction. Yeah, the, the main point is, is Jean David. I think they're selling 90% less of their objects because they're always starting very low and it's getting higher and higher. I cut, I do appreciate these auctions and the point is not only because of the objects and because of the, let's say, price quality relationship, but as well because Jean David is a great entertainer. He's the auctioneer of the, the auction. Always have a look. If there's a hammer auction, please look what is happening and maybe you have 
you want to do like this with the hand or let's say click 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 on on <laughs> to build it then you have Wooly and wallace turnbull and bonham skinner and ren Cher. you know ren Cher. i think the, the expert one of the expert is, is uh, antony meyer a big uh, expert for, for 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 oceanic art the south sea things the point with Wally Wallace, Turnbull and sometimes Bonham Skinner is they have a lot of objects and there are so many boring objects. You know, they are, so ch they are cheap and they always have interesting stuff like good cups for whatever, 15 or 10 or 20,000. But all, all, you know, I'm not, I'm not a reseller. I don't buy objects to resell them. And that's the point. And that's why I would say, hey, I'm, it, I'm, I'm too bored to look and deep what Woolly and Wallace and, and Bonham Skin and Turnbull is offering. Really, that's the point. You know, I don't want to see 50 objects where I could say, yeah, okay, maybe it's great for 200 euros here, yeah, but that's it. It's a little boring. But always have a look at it here. And let's switch now. Let's, let's leave the, the auction scene, come to the fairs. And first to the travel art fairs. And there is one which is the number one in the world and this is of course the Paco de Mont takes place always in September in Paris and this Paco de Mont the photos now all, all see are from my I, I did the photos and um, sometimes they are not photos sometimes they are screenshots of my videos you know from all fairs nearly all fairs you I made videos and you can find them so for example the book had great things following on this, this great chamber the book is getting better and better. Class, he did not sell objects, but he was the curator of a fantastic exhibition. Hansen has always good material, like this Canuck thing, the nose, and Montego is, is always good. <laughs> Schlag is, I don't know how where he gets all these, these, these objects from, but they are awesome. I like the Sarah thing. I like Utzon Frank, was for me, a, Big surprise, it was very good. And uh, this, this kangaroo from Australia at Voyageur Ecurie was for me maybe the best. One of the four, four, five, six best objects I saw there. It was sold, I think, at the first day or the second day. And you know, Paco de Mont, I saw a lot of laughing people, saw a lot of collectors, I saw a lot of, a lot of red dots because they sold a lot of things. I did not see so many objects where I would say they are worth 500,000 euro or 1 million euro, but I think everybody was happy with them, with it. So, Pacuti Mont is still great. However, my favorite exhibition on this Pacuti Mont, this was at Tushalom. Tushalom. It was stunning. It was, oh my gosh, it was so great. It was about the member objects. You know, these are, are parts eroded parts of old, very old drums. And as far as I heard, I think most of these objects came from Max Itzikovic. Max, Max Itzikovic is one of the most important and well-known, uh, let's say, collector. He's living in Paris for, for the travel art. And this exhibition with these member objects was awesome. Yeah, I, I love eroded. Patina and I love the surface. It's German taste, you no know, very so powerful expressionism, yes, but it was wow. Number two of the fairs was the Paris Tribal, still in Paris, more or less same people there in Paris. Uh, then, then for the Parcours du Monde, not so many collectors, not so many visitors, but always interesting, maybe sometimes better prices. The book had an awesome. The exhibition with uh, his, he taught us his his collection of uh, Congo objects. He sold a lot of them. Raton had one of the best uh, exhibitions I ever saw with Dogon ob objects in Thailand. La Hoc was great. And once again, beside Raton, my favorite was Tushalom. <laughs> once again, Tushalom. He had he called a yakam whatever uh, objects hats was amazing. I was there saying, wow, <laughs> Tushalom is, yeah, for 20, for the year 2023, fantastic work. And what about the other travel art fairs? Yeah, farewell. First, the Brunyaf 
I think it was in the January was a winter Polonyaf, but I think nearly nobody was very interested in it. The Polonyaf was the first tribal art fair, fair ever. It was before the Pacu de Mont came. It was always more or less one level of the Pacu de Mont. But the last time there, yeah, I heard there was a lot of cr trouble and crawls, crawls between the galleries and the bosses and whatever. No, it was not nice what they've done there. And yeah, they did. I think it was. Now it's destroyed and the pony off has gone. This was a not so big surprise for me. A big surprise was for me that my favorite <laughs> fair, the Burgundy Driver Show. You know, last year I made the review and I said in 2023 there will be two Burgundy Driver Shows. One in Burgundy, in a new place, and the second maybe in Spain. The reality, the truth is, no, it's gone. There is no Burgundy Driver Show anymore. So. Yeah, the, the people who do the show, they know making a very nice uh, ancient ancient art fair in ancient art fair, you know, with Egyptian and, and Rome and, and Greek and uh, things in Paris. But my partie de campagne, my two or three day holidays in Bourgogne, now it's gone. <laughs> Pity. Other fairs, one the civilizations. They started three or four years. Maybe they can be those who bring the people back to Brussels. I heard that that they're doing a good job, that the mood is great, the mood of the exhibitors is great, the mood of the bosses are great. So, you know, it's, it's yeah, there seems to be a lot of fun. I wasn't there this year, but I think I will be there next year because on January there will be the next uh, Civilizations Brussels Art Fair now with, I think, 24, 25 exhibitors, among them, them real highlights like, like Schlag, I think, is there, and the book is there, and Werner is there, and of course, Ari Foss from Kitsune, he's one of the bosses of the fair, is there. And you know, this is more or less to the same time like the Brafa, the International Art Fair, and like the next Lambert's auction, so it's really worth traveling to, to Belgium, to Brussels, to Bruxelles at the end of January. And what we have next year, we have Tribal Art Fair Amsterdam. I think this year they did an online fair and a real one. And the Tribal Art London. So there is still something going on and that's great. But <laughs> let's see what will happen with Brussels. And I'm still, I'm still sad because of the Bourgogne Tribal Art Fair. What about Tribal Art of the big art, big fairs? Once again, I did videos about all this and yeah, first Prava in Brussels. Next one will be end of January. Create things like from from class, from Dalton Sommeres, he was, was well, a month ago with this Mamouille, and from Schaffel. Schaffel is doing <laughs> each fair. <there. laughs> and uh, was nice, was good. I heard that that not each gallerist was happy. Not. Um, of, 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 with with the things he sold, it, not only the, the tribal art, but it's it was not the best year for for art, the year 2023, and it was not the best year for the fairies like Prafa and for the fairies like Tefa. That's what I heard. Some very conscience, and so it's not a tribal art thing; it's an art thing that there are some problems now in it. And what about the Tefa? In the Tefa, there was one number one auction. This was De Grune. De Grün. He had an uh, great Mumuye exhibition. You see some of the Mumuyes. Some of the Mumuye you could buy, others you could not because they were from, come from a private collection. But the Mumuye objects you could buy, I think most of them were sold. And there's a great book. So the Kroon, I don't know who is doing that, but on Tefa, the Kroon is always the number one. He's always on point and he's selling and wow. So the Kroon is great. But he was not the only one at, at Tefa was good. There was Dulon, it's a good item. There was Ferdin, Raton, Serchoffel with this cool, fantastic object from Papua New Guinea. And, uh, you know, Dulon from Africa, from Congo, Ferdin from, from North America. And uh, a talk from the Congo, a song from the Congo. So Tefa was good, yeah. And <laughs> I don't like the, the pre Columbian stuff so much, but you know, there, I like this grasshopper from Mestak, <laughs> yeah. And there's a, a third big uh, 
care for antique and for art with travel art and this is the FAB or FAB in Paris but I can't tell you anything about it. The point is, I think it was on Wednesday, I asked the press <laughs> department saying, hey, maybe I can come on Saturday, Do I, can I get an accreditation? I did not get an answer and I repeated it, I think on Thursday, Friday, I, didn't, I wrote two emails, I didn't get any answers. <sighs> maybe I got the wrong address or maybe they have problems with the internal communication or maybe they don't care about tribal art or maybe they don't care about a small YouTuber. I don't know what is happening, but uh, <laughs> it, for me it's, it was it doesn't seem to be very professional, sorry, but maybe the fair is fantastic, maybe there was just a communication problem. I don't know what is happening. So I can't tell you anything about the FFB Paris. And let's come to the last point very fast. This is social media. It's a marketplace, once again. Three points. We have first face on Facebook, create or fake, discovering African art. They now have more than 12,000 members. 12,000 members. You can post objects, masks, and they will tell you whether they think it's fake or not. That's the point. But sometimes they have theme weeks that a lot of people join, and sometimes they have selling weeks or weekends a lot of people join. So always interested to have a look on Roberto Domingo's Create or Fake Discovery African Art. One thing he had was deal or no deal on theme week. Theme week and Another one said, oh, this is a great name, took this name and made his own group, which is now called Deal or No Deal Travel Art. I think they have 1,500, I don't know, members. The point is, if you want to buy objects for, let's say, some hundred euros, you can always find interest in objects in this group. You can sell objects and you can buy objects. And if someone tries to sell a fake, because maybe he does not know that it's a fake, you know, fake means it's not authentic used, but uh, <laughs> it seems that it's authentic used because someone has faked uh, uh, patina and faked other things. That means fake. And if someone is selling fake, a lot of people say, hey, sorry, I think this is not the correct one. Okay. And of course, you, third, you have the Tribal Art Society, nice catalogs where you often or sometimes find objects which you have seen on the big art fair and then you see it in their catalog. So. This was my review. I don't know how long I need it, but I think I had some fun. You had some fun. We'll see us next year. 2023 was interesting, but maybe we see us in January in Brussels, January 2024. Let's see what will happen. And yeah, have a great time. Have a happy new year and see you.